seven good men lost their life rig out on the sea. They sunk that all and sprayed C O R E X I T. All the saints on the riverbank and they said we got the flu. But we're living in. Promised land, third world country blue. I said they killed all the turtles, killed all the turtles, man, they're trying to kill a pelican too. You can spend a billion dollars, but you still can't kill the truth. I'm here today because the truth needs to go out. But if you can't work shrimp for the rest of your life, what are we looking at? We seeing shrimp shells in the water yep. coming up on the beach that I ain't never seen before. We got dead whales out here. We got shrimp with black in the gills. We send it into the wildlife. They get somebody from BP or whatever to test it. And, and they come back and say it's black gill disease. So I the God, if the all was blue, when we have blue gill disease, you know? So you have seafood contamination that we need to address. You have the restoration of the Gulf we need to address. We have the health issues we need to address and the economic issues we need to address. And it just seems like it's yesterday's news. So you have my commitment. I'm here with a good friend of mine named Scott Smith. He's a guy who's uh, an inventor. He's invented a wonderful product. He's standing right in front of me. He's got a product here that's one of the products that's part of the solution called Opflex. And I'm here representing that as well. We have the only product that works. It's listed on the EPA NCP list. They won't respond to us. They will not respond. My name is John Kenneth Hutchison. I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and I come down all the way down to Grand Isle. And what I'm doing here is some experiments with uh, high frequency and low frequency radio waves as well as audio. What we're trying to do here is um, take oil and corrects it can convert it into another benign substance and it seems to be working because we had three laboratory tests done by Dr. Naiman. Well it was other people suggesting to me that I tried on water instead of metals because I'm kind of known for what they call the Hutchison effect which is the levitation of objects of any material and I've been doing that ever since I was a kid. The uh, levels in Purdue Do Bay were seven parts per million and it was down to, I believe, just under 1% in hydrocarbons. I just think, uh, I think a BP needs to have their charter, corporate charter revoked. I think they need to have their assets seized. I think uh, there needs to be criminal prosecution of their executives. I think you have to make an example, and but it's just to start, because we have to shift. In the United States, our perception of where do we get energy, and what do we need it for, and how are we as a country gonna live into the, the future? It's a critical time. It's not just about BP, it's a lot more than that. All in that's welfare checks ain't nothing that we want. Yeah, I said. My name is Isidore Crapel Jr. Everybody call me JJ. I'm from Plaquemine Parish, Beers, Louisiana. I shrimp and I fish, crabs, and I make nets for other people. And since BP, my business have been shot. I can't even make nothing. I, I tried shrimping, things ain't like it was. I tried uh, catching a few crabs, and I'm scared to eat them. And then I turned around, I, when it comes to making net, there's nobody out there, so there's no way I could make nets and uh, make any money at it. How much do they think this planet can take? So we're going to have this for the rest of our lives to deal with, and I just really hope that people wake up. We have to make a change. Son, don't you let your daughter out in that water. Man, she might not be coming home. 
Now, I know about that oil spill, how it make people sick. Because I got sick with it myself. Right after I got sick with my lung hurting, I turned around, I caught a heart attack. I was hospitalized, stayed in the hospital for a while. And then, yet yeah, the doctor said my lungs are weak. I got to go back. BP ain't paid for it. Seven people, man, uh, got hospitalized for chemical poison. I'm Captain Lori DeAngelis. I do um, private dolphin cruises in the Back Bay waters. Uh, kind of an emphasis on the, the education and, um, you know, proper viewing of dolphins. You've lost the, the best occupation anyone could have ever happened or ever had, but the truth is that's happened. You know, my job used to be to get up in the morning and go to my boat, and people came on my boat and paid me money <laughs> to take them out and see dolphins, and, and we would just observe the those beautiful reactions with the dolphins, and, you know, because of the amount of time out there, we'd get to see everything you could even begin to dream of with the dolphins. And I fought, and I fought. <laughs> But we didn't do anything to save the back bays, much less the Gulf. So while I'm walking around crying because there's 160 dead dolphins, the truth is it's like 6,500. I've never felt so small in all my life with such a big task ahead of me because I'm not even sure what it means when I read that the dolphins can't sustain any more losses. Um, that's what Noah said, was that these numbers are getting so big that the, the dolphin community will be unable to withstand it. And I don't know what that means. Hi, I'm Robin Young with Guardians of the Gulf. We're a nonprofit located in Alabama. We are fixing to launch two huge musical fundraisers, and the tagline is Harmony for Health. We are raising money for health care. The first real big thing that we did was we participated in the worldwide protest on June 12th. And we had probably three or 400 people show up at that with all the news. That was the first day that I started getting sick because the oil had hit our shores. I, I think we started at 10 o'clock that morning setting up. And by 2 o'clock, we were all coughing and everybody kept complaining that their, their throat was sore. Because it was right there by the Perdido Pass where we were having the function. And that's where the oil was coming in. The booms and the cranes and all the beach cleanup, the marine place. Everybody was in the background of our protest. You know, Orange Beach started having a community meeting every Wednesday. Where they would bring in people from BP, the EPA, NOAA, the Coast Guard, and all that. And have them all at the front of the room. And, and the main topic was, of course, was to talk about the financial. You know, hey guys, it's Robin with Guardians of the Gulf. I'm not here to talk about the finances today. I'm here to talk about the health. I said, is anybody else experiencing coughing and cold-like flu symptoms, sore throats? Well, the room went, went nuts. You know, everybody started raising their hand and the mayor shut me down. He said, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't need to be causing a panic and a stir. Yeah, so they're going to put up a mobile health clinic in southern Louisiana and they're going to put one in Alabama. So they've agreed to not only do the medical, but they are going to bring in um, ophthalmologists and dental. And since there's been so much hype about the pets, they're going to bring in veterinarians too. Well, I'm doing a documentary called The Will to Drill. Uh, that's how it started that I became involved here in the Gulf. And uh, it wasn't too long after that all began that spending time with the people and uh, learning more and more about uh, what quite obviously at this point is a, a tremendous uh, horrible injustice that's uh, going on now with um, people in the area getting sick from what's happened. And I'm just here to show my support. Everybody that's out there needs to uh, not forget the people of the Gulf and uh, do what they can to ensure that the environment is protected uh, against the oil companies in the future and do whatever they can to reach out to their local politicians to make sure that uh, laws are created in the future and regula regulations cre created in the future to help protect the environment and protect uh, the people. It's 85 degrees right now You say we've got the flu you Say we're living here Promised land with 
the third world country blue. Because we're going to meet, we're going to make it bigger, we're going to make it better, and we're going to fight for our, our homeland. This is where we live. Everybody ready to fight for where they live? Yeah. Uh, I think for a lot of people around here that uh, they'd rather die here than live somewhere else. Should we living in promised land, the third world country blue.